Our next speaker is Dr. Edward Timsit. He is with the Production Animal and Health Group at the University of Calgary in um, Alberta, Canada. So welcome, Dr. Timsit. I will get it. So, hi everybody. So, we talk about confirmation of BRD, now we'll talk about detection of BRD. And uh, before I start, I would like to thank the organization committee for selecting this presentation for an oral presentation. So, as you know, oops, as you know, bovine respiratory disease is detected based on distance examination performed by pain riders. It is usually very easy to detect cattle late in the disease process when they are already displaying a lot of clinical signs, like the animal on this picture, that actually should be a video, but it's not working, that has depression, dyspnea, and also, as you can see here, anorexia based on the depression in the pylumbar fossa. However, it is way more difficult to detect cattle early in the disease process. As you know, cattle are pre-animals, and they have a tendency to mask any sign of sickness especially in the presence of human. Therefore, numerous cattle are detected and treated too late in the disease process when the chance of treatment success is reduced. To overcome this problem, numerous health monitoring systems have been developed. By detecting subtle changes in the physiology or the behavior of, of animals associated with disease, this system enables to detect cattle earlier than human can. So, for example, changes in your body temperature can be detected using remand boluses or infrared camera. Changes in feeding behavior, more specifically, decrease in the feeding behavior can be detected using the growth safe system or the ENGS system. And finally, decrease in the number of steps per day on physical activity can be decreased by using pedometer, accelerometer, etc. The question is, we've got these different systems, but what is the best parameter to detect bovine respiratory disease? Is it fever? Is the decreased time spent at the bunk? It is a decreased physical activity. We need to know this information because we need to know which system or which parameter are the most interesting to detect BRD. And also which combination actually will give us the best accuracy, so the best sensitivity and specificity to detect cattle with BRD. This is why we've done this study. That's the objective was to determine the sensitivity and specificity of changes in body temperature physical activity and feeding behavior to detect cattle with BRD, and also to identify patterns that are sensitive and specific to detect cattle with BRD based on those simultaneous changes. For example, cattle with fever and abnormal feeding behavior, or feeding behavior, abnormal feeding behavior, fever, and also decrease in physical activity. So for this purpose, we followed 561 steers during the first 50 days on feed at the commercial feedlot in Alberta, Canada. Those cattle were recently weaned, auction market derived, and commingled. So they were determined as being high risk and received tulatomycin on arrival as standard feedlot procedure. On addition, they receive a remain temperature bolus. Each of them receive a remain temperature bolus that is measuring the body temperature every 15 minutes and then transmit this body temperature to a um, receiver and then that is connected to a computer. In addition, those animals were fitted with a three-axis accelerometer on their front legs. You can see the accelerometers here. Actually, the picture is not that great. And this enabled us to follow the physical activity of each animal. And in addition to that, we placed in the, in the, in the pen an antenna here. You can see those two wires that actually generate a magnetic field within 30 centimeters in front of the bunk. And this magnetic field was picked up by the three-axis accelerometers. So we had also proxy for the time spent at the bunk and the number of feed the bunk visits. Oh. Cattle were visually inspected daily by pen shaker, and each animal with visual BRD signs, such as depression, anorexia, and also respiratory character changes, so dyspnea, polypnea, etc., were pulled by the pen shaker and clinically examined by a veterinarian. For each case <coughs> um, selected by the pen shaker, we also took one or two apparently pen mage, pen mage control, so animals that were apparently healthy, and we did also a clinical examination. In addition, we did a blood sample on both sick and SCCAF to measure the serum haptoglobin concentration. So we defined a true positive BRD case, so a true case of BRD, 
based on cattle that were pulled by the pain shaker had an abnormal lung auscultation and also a serum aptoglobin concentration above or equal to 0.25 gram per liter. Negative control, so the real LC case, I would say, would be the cattle that were pulled as control, had no abnormal lung standard auscultation and a serum aptoglobin concentration below than 0.25 gram per liter. We analyzed all the data obtained by our, our health monitoring system retrospectively at the end of the study period. Change in feeding behavior, more specifically the time span at the bunk and the number of feeding visits, the change in physical activity, so the number, the decreased number of steps per day or the line time, either increased or decreased, and the increase in body temperature were detected using an algorithm, a custom algorithm. This algorithm detected significantly significant increase or decrease in the signal. Here you've got an example of, of, the, of the results. So in blue, you've got all the increase. So you can see that there's the first increase in body temperature here, here, and here. The decreased are um, here illustrated by those yellow bars. So you've got first decrease in the, for example, in physical activity, number of steps taken per day here, here, and here. And same for feeding behavior, some decrease also in yellow here. You can see that animal was pulled by, with BRD on that day and was diagnosed with BRD on that day. He had an increased body temperature, a decreased time, a decreased time spent at the bunk, and also a decreased physical activity. Oh, slice turning on. So we calculated the sensitivity and specificity of each changes to detect cattle with BRD based on those formula. So for the sensitivity, we took the total number of animal with detected change at the time of technical examination, and we divide that by the total number of sick animals. For example, here on that graph, you've got an animal with BRD. He had an increased body temperature, so that would be 100% sensitivity is detected. Specificity was calculated by dividing the total number of control that were not detected at the time of clinical examination or 48 hours before clinical examination. So within the two previous day also. So for example, this animal here was, Oscar was examined as a control. He didn't have any detection prior to, uh, prior to the examination, so was 100% specificity. So let's move on to the results now. Oops. Out of the 561 steers, 35 were pulled as BRD case by the pen shaker, but only 34 remain as true positive after our clinical examination. 49 cattle were pulled as control, but only 26 remain as true negative. Actually, seven of them had abnormal lung sounds at pulmonary auscultation, and 16 of them had very high level of aptoglobin concentration. So probably an underlying inflammatory process. If we look now at the best parameters to detect BRD, you can see on that table that the best parameter to detect BRD was by far body temperature, an increase in body temperature, with a sensitivity of 87% and a specificity of 96%. In other words, 87% of the clinically affected animals were detected based on increase in body temperature detected by the algorithm, and only 4% of the control animal had an increase in body temperature at the time of the clinical examination within the two days prior the clinical <coughs> examination. The second best parameter was feeding time at the bunk, in decreased feeding time at the bunk with a total accuracy of 71, and followed by activity and the total number of steps per day with an accuracy of 65. The less accurate parameter was the line time that was like flipping a coin, 55% of accuracy. So if we take the the best three parameters, which are feeding with a body temperature, feeding time, and physical activity, the first chance to be detected was actually an increase in body temperature. That was detected 56 hours on average between the pen rider. So we can detect earlier following increase in body temperature. Followed by decrease in number of steps, detected on average 39 hours before the pen checker. And finally, time spent at the bunk, detected 35 hours before the pen checker. But although all this monitoring system enabled us to detect sick animal earlier than pain checker, a problem arose from the data. As you can see on this graph, each animal had multiple detection during the feeding period. For example, this animal had four increase in body temperature that were detected by the algorithm. And those are really high temperature. And they had two decrease in feeding time and 10 decrease in physical activity. 
So you can imagine that if we have to pull every animal multiple times during the feeding period, that's not very practical, and most of the time those animals won't be very sick. So we had an idea. Why not to combine multiple health parameters? For example, if you look at that graph, the day the animal was pulled, well, the only day actually we had concomitantly an increase in fever, by a decrease in body temperature, sorry, a decrease in the feeding time, and a decrease in the number of steps. And if you look at this table, we had 2.3 to 7.7 .7 detection per animal during the first 50 days on feed when we're looking at only one parameter. The worst was really the number of steps taken per day, with in total for the 561 steers, 4,304 detection. So, yeah, people looking at that type of re detection rate were just turned crazy. However, when we combine those parameters together, we, we significantly decrease the number of detection. Here we went from 2.3 to 7.7 to only 1 to 2.4. I agree, it's still a little bit high, but still very reduced. And if we look at that, although we reduced, significantly reduced slightly the sensitivity, actually the accuracy is still pretty good. So my key message of this presentation are that the best parameter to detect bovine respiratory disease is by far body temperature. I know that there is a system outside that will measure physical activity or feeding time, but I really strongly believe that body temperature to detect actually infectious disease like BRD is really important. The algorithm that we use and the parameter that we monitored enabled to detect cattle 35 to 56 hours before pen checker. So those systems will enable us to detect cattle earlier in the disease process. However, as you've seen, we've got a high number of, I would say, sort of false positive detection that can be reduced by using, by combining multiple health parameters. So it's really my key message today is don't believe that one health parameter would be enough to detect sick animals. You really need to combine those. That's what we're doing every day when we're checking pens. We always look for, is my cattle lost feed? Is my cattle breathing faster? Is my cattle separate from the group? We need a system that is doing the same. And finally, although, you know, as you all know, we've got a lot of under detection for BRD. So maybe some of these fever episodes, some of these detected episodes are actually associated with a decrease in performance or even in decrease in welfare. And, and those cattle may probably benefit from any kind of treatment, let's say immunostimulant, all the stuff. So further research is needed. So thank you very much for your attention. I would like to thank Feedlot Health Management Services for the technical support and also my team. So Afra, we did most of the work. Calvin Booker, who is, who is a managing partner at the Ocotox. Trevor Alexander from AgriFood Canada. And Dr. René Quignot that did all the cumulative sum tests in France. And this is my contact info if you want to ask me any question by emails. Thank you. We have time for a question or two for Dr. Timpsit. Oh, question. You looked at the feed intake. Have you also looked at the water intake? Actually, that's a, that's a very good question. Yeah, we didn't present those data, but thanks to the boluses, actually, we had those big drops. I don't know if you look at, at the remain temperature, we can see those big drops, and that gives us a proxy of the frequency of, of uh, watering, you know, uh, watering and also the, um, the volume of water. What we observed is the, the number of time the, go, the, the animal goes to the watering is not very associated with disease. And actually, there's some cattle that are even drinking more when they're sick than others. However, it seemed that the volume could be of interest, but still, oops, still it's, uh, in my opinion, a poor predictor like feeding behavior. It's not the best one. Any other, oh, other question? I'm slightly confused. You're, you're saying that temperature is the best Microphone, way. please. Thank you. I'm slightly confused because you're saying temperature is the best way of uh, High temperature is the best way of diagnosing um, respiratory disease. And our previous speaker said it wasn't. So one of you is telling <laughs> nonsense. Uh, that's, actually, that's a very good point. And I will talk about the, the whisper also, I think, on, on Wednesday. Um, I think there's two things here. We've got, when I look at BRD, there's two things, the detection and the confirmation step. Temperature is the best to detect. 
But is it the best to confirm? Probably not. Why? Because that's what I showed you. You've got numerous fever episodes. Cattle can be febrile because of tipno abscesses, can be febrile because acidosis, can be febrile because vaccination even. So my point is that if we can follow cattle based on those monitoring systems like fever, and early detect those animals, and then apply a specific confirmation test like the whisper or other, or other type of stethoscope or lung ultrasonography, then we'll have a complete set. We'll, cat we'll detect cattle early in the disease process and then confirm that there's really BRD and even classified this animal in different BRD categories and start to adapt the therapy. You know, that oxytet on the cattle that has really long lung score you know, fluorophenicol or whatever antibiotic on the one that a high lung score, so we can start to separate. I hope that is to the question. For prediction is good, for confirmation not that great. Yeah, I think it's the, the key definition is two different populations we're looking at. He's talking about the cattle in the pen trying to find sick cattle, and I was talking about the population that we've already pulled and identified and said, what are we going to do about them? So it's confirmation, yeah, confirmation versus detection. Right, because <laughs> uh, thank, you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Lowe. So you're, you were picking up the temperature how many hours before clinical signs on, on yours? So here was 56 hours before the pain checkers, knowing that okay. you've got a big range, and sometimes even more than, than, than seven, five to seven days right. even earlier. So, so good question. Thanks for asking that because half the crowd was sitting there going, wait a minute, you know, we need to have an arm wrestling match here or something between the two. 56 hours before clinical signs of BRD at the time of BRD. So do all, I want to make sure everybody understands that, that it is, Dr. Lowe mentioned it, two, two very different times. We're using a rumen bolus to pick up temperature of a calf saying, wow, this calf's getting sick. So 